Welcome to Mountaineer Nation. I'm Sam the Man, and this is another episode of The Mountaineer Effect. I'm here with my Oklahoma connection. We got CP and Lucas with me today. We're here to talk about the debacle in Norman. Them mothers got rich rotted, and they ain't too happy about it. As West Virginia fans know all too well how that feels, and it sucks. So we're going to talk about that right now on The Mountaineer Effect. Play the intro. So, CP, it looks like Lincoln Riley showed his colors, <laughs> and he left you rich, rotted. What do you think about that crap? Good riddance. I don't I, – I, I've been on your podcast multiple times saying we had the conversation about Neil and him being very similar. The lack of a killer instinct was wearing very thin on all of the fan base, and I'm not mad he left. I'm mad, I'm mad at how he handled it. I've never – since Rich Rod – and this is worse than what Rich Rod did because he – Rich Rod didn't have any crocodile tears for West Virginia. He just said, I'm out, and went to Michigan, basically. He had that fake little press conference where he was talking about how the team lost and that it shouldn't have been that way, and then he was gone. Lincoln, in a matter of 24 hours, went from denying the rumors of the LSU and interrupting the reporter so that he couldn't ask are there any other teams – to uh, allegedly, from what I've heard, saying he was gone bed one morning. My question is, like, do you think do you think Bob Stoops had anything to do with how Lincoln tried to handle it? Like, do you think maybe he consulted with Bob and Bob's like, man, you need to do it this way and maybe helped him do it a little bit better? Or do you think he just kind of went gung-ho? No, I think I've – I, again, every report I see, I don't really take too serious, and this is from a credible journalist, but from there's been a lot of people that were saying that allegedly Bob was upset with Lincoln because Lincoln had no intentions of even talking to the team, which I don't fully believe that. As scummy as he is, I, I think the two-and-a-half-minute long I'm doing this for my family speech was Lincoln Riley being Lincoln Riley. Lucas, what do you think? Do you think do you think Bob had anything to do with it, or do you think Lincoln just did it all on his own? I don't think he said a word to Bob. Uh, going off of what Bob's press conference was today, I think that Lincoln basically just not – he told him to politely screw off. Um, Lincoln – well, Bob gave that – Lincoln, his job. He retired early. He still had years left, in my opinion, and he thought it was best for the program. And Lincoln just took that and washed it away in a matter of a day or two. And it just, it honestly makes me sick. This was the most talented team we've had since 2000, and Lincoln's heart hasn't been in it since September. You could tell by the play calling. And he, possibly cost us a national championship i don't really know if we could have beat georgia realistically but even having a chance he took that and threw it away and that's what pisses me off with anything i've i run this like sooner account on twitter and i've defended that man every week this year and he took that and just destroyed it and i'm hurt i'm not gonna pretend i'm hurt or not hurt, it's just crap. I think essentially Bob gave him the keys to a Ferrari and he left it for a fucking Tesla. Well, I know, I mean, me and you've talked a lot about it, and I know, like, you've talked all season about, you know, Lincoln not having balls and that his play calling was really suspect. You know, and it's funny because as a West Virginia fan, I always look back at that pit game and some of the calls that went on in that game, and it's like, man, like, you can't help but think, you know, maybe they the coach is undercoached or underperformed or undercalled or or something because like the the whole the whole game was off and I kind of got that feeling with with Bedlam like it was just off. I mean, I know the co- the refs really really sucked and but like they just seemed off. I just wonder, you know, you always wonder if that's intentional or just a product of the decision 
that's maybe subconscious or something? I think a lot of times coaches have a habit of if they are potentially out the door, coaching to not win rather than coaching to not lose. So I think maybe Lincoln was like, all right, I've done enough this first half to make it look believable like I'm trying and just kind of went with the narrative of the OSU defense being top three and just said, you know, they just played good, played better than us. He didn't seem to care about the refs penalties or anything like that. He just, he was clocked out, man. And I, there's a lot of, there's a lot of breadcrumb trails that kind of, it's easy to look at him now and go, wow, how did I not think of that? The big one to me is him flying to California on his bye week for his personal day. Well, the same thing kind of happened with Rich Rod going to Michigan. Like nobody thought twice about it until hindsight. What were you going to say, Lucas? I was going to say, and after how we played after the bye week, you know, the Baylor game where they just decimated us for four quarters. They abs- the play calling is the worst I've ever seen in Oklahoma. Yeah, his at that point, his foot was out the door. I mean, it, it was a shock to everybody. I mean, you know, it really shows that Lincoln didn't have the gumption to coach in the SEC. I mean, it's basically what it comes down to. He didn't have the wherewithal. I mean, maybe he didn't want to from the beginning, and that's what I've heard was he didn't want to go to the SEC anyway, and – I get that, but I mean, you know, if if you don't have the balls to want to coach in the SEC, then what the hell are you doing coaching a major powerhouse team in the country anyway, right? The worst part is that he acts like it was like he he his press conference, man. Just so much, so much of the stuff he said was just regurgitated shit he said with us, like, oh, we're we're really close. We're on the verge of something. I'm excited to build a program here, a winning program. And I mean, if anything, the fact of the matter is that as each year went by and he started losing Bob's recruits, the team started getting a little worse. And my thing is, if you can't win with Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield, say what you want about Baker Mayfield right now in the NFL. In college, he was that dude. And so was Kyler. And if you can't get it done with them, it's not the players at that point. And, I I mean, I agree with that. You know, I think, you know, having Bob Stoop step in really helps a lot because it it helps soften the blow a little bit because he's really beloved and he's still – I think he's still got some coaching left in it. Well, that's the thing, like, viewers, like, you got to realize, like, we're on a a coaching carousel right now that – you know, here in just the last little bit, what Chip Kelly's going to uh, to LSU, <laughs> uh, Brian Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly. Sorry, I mean like there's there's a lot going on. You know, Cincinnati's getting ready to get blindsided. <laughs> I think I think their coach is probably going to be gone. Uh, Lucas was talking about that. Back to Notre Dame, huh? <laughs> um, I mean it's this is going to be a revolving circus and. You know, it all started with Lincoln Riley choosing to go to the University of Southern California, which I don't understand that at all. Like, I don't, I don't get it. The Pac-12 is so, it's so down. Like, I just don't, I don't understand. Like, I get he don't want to compete in the SEC. He has an easy playoff ride every year in the Pac-12 until he plays teams that are out of conference and gets his ass whooped like he did every year with us because the I mean, that, we had was enough to win championships and he just didn't get it done because yep. i mean that's that's essentially what's going to happen is you know he may go to the pac-12 and win the pac-12 and possibly get a bid you know but he's not going to be able to compete in the, with the sec and he I, he's not going to be able to compete with the big 10 either i mean like i just don't understand you know I just I, – I, qu- I quite don't understand it. Um, but such is the nature of these things, I guess. He just essentially made a lateral move. Like, he – he Lincoln Riley, and I tweeted all the USC fans that were talking shit and saying all this stuff. I said, congrats. Your ceiling is a conference championship and a bowl win once every four years. That 55-10 yeah. and 10 record is overshadowed to me by that 0-3 playoff. And that one and four 
bowl game record. Well, and that's the thing. Like, as a West Virginia fan, it makes me take a step back and look at Neil Brown because, you know, you know, CP, I've always compared Lincoln and Neil, you know, kind of cut from the same cloth. And it's funny when you look at when I look at it now because Lincoln Riley really had no no balls when it come comes to uh, coaching a football team, and now I'm looking at Neil Brown saying, "Man, that dude ain't got no balls either." Like, you know, is he going to cut and run the first the first opportunity he gets to make a lateral movement? I mean, to really make a move, you know, Kentucky comes calling, is he gone? And and that's something that I think as a West Virginia fan we need to stay aware of. Um, because that could very well happen. And, you know, I wouldn't, I mean, I could see, um, you know, you know, if, if Bob Stoops coaches for a couple of years, I don't, you know, I don't think that's going to happen, but you never know. I mean, you know, maybe Mark Stoops and decides he wants to come coach too. And then all of a sudden Kentucky's wide open and there goes Neil Brown, you know, once again, West Virginia, you know, without a coach, it's just, it's so funny because you never know how this carousel is going to go. Honestly, with all this news, the per- the real losers is Oklahoma State. They had their biggest win in their program history, and not a single damn person is talking about them because Big Brother decided to, you know, get in the news again. Like, they're probably going to be a playoff team, and Oklahoma is just like, hi, we're still bigger than y'all. And that's, I mean, that's very true. And it's actually kind of funny if you really think about it, you know, you know, little brother, once again, (laughs) getting completely overlooked just because big brother, you know, in this case, kind of shit the bed with your coach, you know, like it's kind of funny. And it it really is. Cause I think, you know, I think Oklahoma state's got a really good shot at making the final four. We'll just have to see how, how, how it plays out. It's just so frustrating. This whole season has been, an absolute mess, man. Like it's the we have there's a journalist here that broke down in a thread all the shit that's happened with the 2021 Oklahoma team. And I mean, we have players getting arrested for burglary. We had we had this Lincoln debacle. Like there's just there's there's something new. The spin the quarterback controversy, there was something new every week, every month with this team. And at the end of the day, it's it's easy to look back and be like, wow, like Lincoln really didn't handle anything in a way that someone that wanted to stay was. I just think ultimately Lincoln Riley is like that girl that you have a thing for in high school that doesn't know what she wants and just kind of wants to hop from person to person to see what, what all they offer. And at the first chance she gets, you know, she's going to want a ring essentially. And well, and something that this really makes you have to think about a little bit is the transfer portal. You know, because so many people are so critical of the transfer portal, but now you use this as an example because, you know, here are all these kids that were recruited by Lincoln Riley and staff going to OU to play for Lincoln Riley and staff. He absconds and takes the majority of his coaching staff with him. Why should they be stuck somewhere where, you know, he goes to their house and meets their mom and be like, I'm going to be your boy's coach and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Just complete and utter bullshit. And I call it predatory recruiting because that's essentially what it is. And it was a whole, it's been a whole lot worse in the past past. So I really think like this is going to change the perspective on some of the transfer portal issues because these kids don't, they deserve better than that. These athletes, they deserve better than that. And they should be able to have a say in what their future holds when their coach leaves. So with that being said, Spencer's already hit the portal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do we think Caleb is going to stay? Um, and where do we think Spencer's going to end up? Lucas. I've been under the mindset. It seems like reports are saying different. I'm still under the mindset that Lincoln never really wanted to bench Spencer and that him and Caleb never really, he didn't want to play Caleb this year. He wanted Spencer and he basically has thrown a hissy fit and now he's going to USC. I think Spencer's going to follow him and I think Spencer's going to be his guy next year and he's going to play mid-tier football. 
I don't know that I believe that, though, because I saw reports earlier saying that Spencer was texted by Lincoln about going to USC and was kind of hinting at maybe you should come with me. And Spencer allegedly said, good luck, LOL. Well, I mean, I think, you know, whatever Spencer decides to do, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine – I couldn't imagine following a coach – like that. I, I just couldn't imagine it. I mean, because it shows you that the first new shiny thing that comes along, especially with Spencer getting, you know, getting benched for Caleb, the first new shiny toy he gets, you're going to be back on the bench. That shows you that right there. And then, you know, Caleb, and I said it in our last podcast we did together, you know, I think Caleb embodies like the Oklahoma spirit and the Oklahoma attitude and mentality. So I personally think he stays and sees it through. I think um, I think Bob will get real close to him to kind of help him make this transition. I mean, didn't didn't you tell me that Caleb's family moved to Oklahoma to be there? I mean, that, that's hard to pick up and move. Yeah, and I mean, I've read, again, I take everything that I read with a grain of salt. There's been a lot of reports saying that supposedly today Oklahoma had a meeting with the Williams family and let them know how, where their stance is. I think he's kind of waiting to see who the head coach and offensive coordinator will be. So if the, 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 the most recent rumor I've heard is that we're looking at taking Old Miss as offensive coordinator. And I think that would, I think Caleb could look at that and be like, wow, I could do really good things there. But Ultimately, it sucks because Caleb doesn't owe us anything at all. And he said on record that he would have walked on to play for Lincoln Riley regardless. But if I was Caleb and I was his family, I would also think about the fact that would I have ever been pursued had Brock not transferred? Well, and that's something you've talked about a lot is we don't we tend to think not to think so. We think that if, if he hadn't transferred, Caleb would have probably ended up elsewhere. What, regardless of how you feel about Oklahoma, because I know there's a lot of detractors out there, you know, Big 12 detractors and that don't care for Oklahoma, but, like, you have to feel for a football program that this is dumped in your lap because, like, like there's going to be so many programs that's getting ready to go through this. I mean, Notre Dame just is dealing with it. Um, Cincinnati's about to deal with it. I mean, it's it's something that just – it's it's ridiculous. Like the money game of it all is it's absolutely ridiculous. I think I think something really needs to be done about it to an extent. I mean, I I don't think you know. I'm not saying that you have to make them stay or anything, but man, like I I don't think it's right that these colleges pursue coaches while the season is active. I think that is that should be off the table. Now, if you want to, if you want to pursue a coach the minute the bowl games are over, great. But while the season is in, it should be off limits. What do you? Well, I mean, USC is by no means the most morally, like they're not. <laughs> USC by no means has any morals, you know. So it's one of those things where it's like I'm not Reggie. shocked. In, Reggie, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not well, shocked in the least that they were doing scandalous things like that. I just. I'm more baffled at the fact that just how quick the whole coaching staff was pretty much like, yeah, we'll go to, we'll go to USC with you. It, this shit had, it was so surgical, man. He did this the day before walk-in interviews or at-home interviews. Like it's, it's ridiculous. He knew what he was doing and he was recruiting so heavily out of Southern California. And it's, it's very fishy now that you look back on it. Yeah. I mean, it, it all adds up. What are you going to say, Lucas? Um, yeah, I've been wanting to say for a little bit, I think it's complete and utter crap that he spent the last few months recruiting for USC on Oklahoma's dime. I think there needs to be some – I don't know if that's against the rules. There's, there has to be some rule that's against because that's just crap. So, that's where that's where that's where I'm at too, man. As an Oklahoma fan, I'm pissed off that we were paying him all this money just for him to take everything that we were giving him money to help build and fucking take it to to Cal- California. Like I just, it, it's baffling to me. And I agree. I think something needs to be done. There's there's no way that that's not a violation in some form, man. 
So what's the timeline been like before you Oklahoma guys? Like, when did you find out? Because I know when the rumors hit, you know, the rumor, you know, yesterday and then, then all of that. But how exactly did it all unfold? Like, take me through what you went through yesterday as it unfolded and your your thought mentality as it unfolded. For me, I was just – I was watching one of the NFL games – and I start scrolling through Twitter, and I keep seeing, like, he's gone, and, like, it actually happened and stuff. I'm, like, confused, and then I get to the Fox one where they're, like, yeah, Lincoln Riley's going to USC. And, like, it was utter shock, first and foremost. And then I think I tossed my phone and walked into my kitchen and was, like, he's actually leaving to my dad and grandma. And it was betrayal anger it's just like it felt like we gave that man seven years and he just threw it away and the first thing i thought was bob stoops he ran bob stoops out of town because he was gonna go take another job somewhere else then he threw all that away if i was bob i would honestly never really i don't want to say never forgive him but like he screwed bob over big time no one holds a grudge like Oklahoma fans do, man. Well, and me and me and CP just just the other day did a did a podcast talking about the LSU rumors, and you know we neither one of us thought that was going to happen, and then like USC came out of nowhere. So what what how did that hit you when you started hearing about USC? I mean, like I still can't wrap my brain around. I can only imagine being a Sooner fan. I feel like, in a way, again, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist guy, but what I will preface this by saying is that if this happened, I'm not surprised. My theories that I think happened potentially are that Lincoln and his friends and his family and his agent were sending smoke screens on LSU boards to deter the LSU, to make it more about LSU and less about him leaving, period. And I think that there's a little bit of credibility to that belief. My, I also agree with Lucas that Bob was ran out of town, basically out of fear of losing Lincoln, because I would not be surprised that if Lincoln was considered being, cause he's from Texas tech. So I would not have been surprised in the least if he would have been looking at being the head coach at Texas tech and Oklahoma saw that as, Oh shit. That could be a problem for us. Let's just promote this man and give him the keys to the kingdom. And so for that, I look at how he handled this. And it's a textbook example on how to not handle things. I've never seen this low class of a move ever. And that's my thing is I wasn't even sad. There was no, I was not crying about losing Lincoln because I wanted him gone eventually. I, and you and I have said this several times, Sam. I said, if Lincoln leaves, I'm not sad. I'm not upset about it because at the end of the day, it's the University of Oklahoma. It's not the University of Lincoln Riley's. And as much as he wants to make it about himself, the jacket that he wore said, oh, you, it didn't say LR on it. And so my thing is that I just I, he, I don't know if he just thought he was just bigger than the program or what. I just it's baffling to me. And, and the people that are comparing what he's doing to us to the SEC move are idiots. And I will say that again. If you compare Lincoln Riley abandoning Oklahoma during a rivalry game to a move of Oklahoma's cho- choosing, because that's four years from now at the latest and probably two at the earliest, we are, we're not giving the Big 12 – we're not just dipping out overnight. They have time to talk to other teams – they have time to figure out, figure things out. So I think that that whole comparison is bullshit. This honestly feels like when uh, the old Cleveland Browns shipped off to Baltimore overnight. I mean, literally, literally overnight. My question is like, like Lincoln Riley in the future, and and the only reason thing I can come up with in my head, I thought a lot about this today, is. Maybe he sees a formula for getting into the NFL that Pete Carroll used and maybe decided I'm going to pursue that route, maybe go to USC and, and I mean, really essentially 
completely copy Pete Carroll. Do you think that he has NFL aspirations? I think that I look like an idiot now for saying that if he turned down the Dallas Cowboys job, why would he go anywhere else? But that was last year. That was not this year. I, I am not shocked that he left. I'm shocked that he did it so fast and did it. But again, it's kind of a double-edged sword because I'd rather him do it now than wait till after the bowl game or wait till March where he's doing all, all these visits to these recruits and pitching them Norman and then heading out to California and saying, oh, things weren't really working out for me, you know, because it's <sighs> we're going to lose recruits no matter what. We've every ESPN alert I've been getting has been about us losing recruits. I've been hearing it all day. Again, we don't have an official alert, but from what I've been hearing, I and I talked with you about this earlier, Sam. Venables is the guy I wanted. And if we're taking the offensive coordinator from Old Miss, this is the biggest upgrade we could have possibly had. It's from NBC, though, so it is pretty reliable. Well, I mean, you're looking at going from a s- s- complete straight offensive-minded head coach to a defensive guru. I mean, I think I, you know. I think if that's who you land, not only is it an upgrade defensively, but it's a it's an upgrade for the SEC cha- changeover too, right? Yep, that's exactly why I wanted Venables. I am tired of I. I understand Lincoln is an offensive guru and I'm not going to let the way he left get in the way of my football IQ or how I feel because uh, I just, you know, you can't be, you can't have blinders on with things, you know, like I'm sure you feel the same way. Rich Rod was a great coach, great coach, but the way he handled it kind of makes it hard for you to appreciate all that he did. Well, and that's the thing, you know, that's the thing, like with Rich Rod, you know, that's the difference between Oklahoma and West Virginia. Rich Rod could have been a a football god in West Virginia. Like, and that's what people don't realize. Like, if you could come to, if he would have taken that team to a national championship, they didn't have to win it. And I, I think they would have that year. But if he would have just gotten them there, he could have stayed at West Virginia forever. If he wanted to, they, I mean, they would have never, they would have paid him more. They would have upgraded their facilities. I mean, the people would have endeared themselves to him. Like, like they do Don Nealon. Like he's, he would have been a God instead. See, he, he's a freaking traitor. <laughs> see, that, that's what's frustrating to me is that we went from being projected to be the national champions and having a surefire Heisman finalist to our head coach is gone that said Heisman hopeful is transferring and we still don't know who's making the trip to New York for the Heisman anyways so it's just we had such a fall from grace this year and we're 10 and 2 10 and 2 dude like I see all these Nebraska fans and just a bunch of friends of fans of poverty fan bases laughing at Lincoln leaving us and I'm like you guys would kill to have what we had because guess what Oklahoma at worst next year is a four loss team and that's pushing it that's really pushing it especially if they're still in the big 12 well that's the thing I mean if Oklahoma is still in the big 12 next year I mean there's no reasonable expectation you know even if you have a couple of transfer kids I mean you know they transfer out but they also transfer in you know and with what you could potentially be building, I mean, you're not going to lose more than four games. I mean, it's just not going to happen in the Big 12. So, I mean, like, the monochrome for success and, and, and failure for OU, I mean, it's really not going to make that big of a difference. I mean, that's how I felt about, felt about Dana Holgerson. He was a four-loss guy, you know? He was a four-loss guy on the way to nowhere. Yeah, we may have a six loss Neil Brown, but we all feel like he's on the way to somewhere, right? So, you know, I, I can totally see that. And any Texas fans that listen to this, if there is any, y'all went five and seven this year and you guys lost to Kansas. Y'all need to keep our names out of your mouth. 
Y'all were bad. Steve Sarkeesian is a failure as a head coach, and he always will be, and y'all will be firing him in three or to four years. Sorry, not sorry. Go enjoy not making a bowl game. That's what's sad about Lincoln is that we – Lincoln, what sucks, this is the first head coach since like the 40s to leave OU. Not retire or step down and hand it over to someone to leave. Just straight up leave. And so, it, people that think that we're going to have this fall from grace, it's the University of Oklahoma. It's always been consistently great. There were, there were quite a few years where it was rough. That was before my time. So, I've been spoiled my whole time as an OU fan. But that's the thing is people are acting like, Lincoln, like we weren't going to pay Lincoln or like we fire all of our coaches. We wanted Lincoln to stay. Oklahoma wanted to give him the keys. Oklahoma did a lot of stuff for him that they did not do for previous coaches. And he threw it all away to sell out, to go pack his shit and go flying and fly to California. The part that upsets me is he said at the press conference, something along the lines of, I called my coaches and said the plane leaves at six and they were there at five forty. Yeah, I mean, and and you know, to get on Lucas's point about Steve Sarkeesian, I mean, think about this guys, like, you know, if Lincoln Riley's not the guy to take you into the SEC, Steve Sarkeesian sure as shit ain't the guy to take you into the SEC. I mean, Texas is gonna have Texas is either gonna have to he's either gonna have to prove himself now, uh or they might as well go ahead and fire him and get somebody else that can actually get them in, in, acclimated into the SEC because there's going you know there's going to be a few growing pains for Texas and OU when they go to the SEC. I think everybody kind of agrees with that. But I think if you can get uh, if you can get venerables, I, I I don't think that the drop off is going to going to be as bad going into the SEC because I mean he starts recruiting heavy defensive now and even if you go into the sec with a stronger defense and a weaker offense i mean look at georgia not such a bad pattern to follow i mean honestly this couldn't happen for you guys at a better time honestly honestly when you really look at it it's better to happen two years too soon than two years too late yep it's kind of like the bill belichick outlook he would rather get rid of players a year too early than a year too late that's kind of kind of where I'm at with it you know like I I was over Lincoln I honestly have had a sour taste for Lincoln since the Rose Bowl because even in 2018 I looked at the coaching that he was doing in playoff games and went I don't know if that's enough to do it for us yeah well in West Virginia I mean and I hate harping back to freaking Dana Holgerson. It seems like all roads lean to Dana, but I mean, I could make the argument that they, they left him around one year too long because what he left for his successor is nothing. He didn't leave him anything. And I mean, when you do wait one year too many or two years too many, it, that really can set your program back a decade. Look at Nebraska. I, I think the thing that, that, about Venables is that I honestly think that because he w- he was with OU before he left and the Lucas was was it wasn't it basically that they we brought in Mike and that was why Brett or why Venables left. Yeah, so our defense struggled a little bit because the Big Twelve offenses were getting completely overpowered. So. We wanted to bring Mike back in to do the co-defensive coordinator thing that won the thing that won us a national championship. It pissed Venables off. He went over to Clemson and yeah, he's done pretty well for himself, I swear. Yeah, I mean he's hungry for a head coach job, you know. Like that's the thing too, is I honestly think that he is tired of being a coordinator and he wants to be paid. And this couldn't have happened at a better time. I think that OU, from my understanding, him and Joe C have stayed pretty close throughout, even after him leaving. Because, I mean, he was with Oklahoma for so long, man. So you don't stay there that long and not have some love for the school. 
So I honestly think that if Oklahoma's like, hey, man, we messed up with the Mike situation. We shouldn't have ran you out of town. Would you want to be our head coach where you can have the keys and you can do whatever you want? You can if you want to be a defensive team, go for it. If you want to mix things up and have a Clemson-esque offense, go for it. I mean, and I think that might be the right approach. I mean, honestly, I mean, um, you know, a quarterback like Caleb Williams with a stout, stout defense, you don't have to score a whole lot of points. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you really don't. You don't want to give CP a minute to give his closing uh, message. What would you like to say? to what, Say something to Lincoln Riley and say something to the OU fan base. Lincoln, man, you're a fucking snake. You're not welcome back here. Save your crocodile tears. I was unaware that reptiles had tear ducts until today. So take your shit. Go. You were gone. You, We were all fed up with your play calling. You couldn't handle the fire, and that's why you got out of the kitchen. Our expectations are no different than what USC's will be. You might have a little more time with UFC, USC, but ultimately it's the same fan base expectations. They've just been down in the dumps since they beat OU. Haven't done a damn thing since 2005. So, good riddance. I don't want anybody at Oklahoma that's not about Oklahoma, and it's clear he wasn't. It's clear he was only about Lincoln Riley. As for the fan base, things are going to be all right, man, and trust in Joe C. And we all know to trust in Joe C. Joe C knows exactly what to do to keep this program alive. We'll be all right. We were better before Lincoln, and we'll be fine without him. The standard Lucas. is the Oklahoma standard, not the Lincoln Riley standard. Lucas, message to Lincoln Riley and to the fan base. Lincoln, honestly, thank you for making Kevin Durant the second most hated man in Oklahoma. Um, you fucked us over. Goodbye. Go enjoy Hollywood. Go enjoy having your players completely screw you over. You're probably going to win some games. Congrats. Your biggest competition is Oregon, and now you're going to go, you know, fail in any big game you play just like you did with us. I defended you for four years, and you made me and you made Bob Stoops look stupid. Politely go fuck yourself. And to the fans, we're going to be all right. Um, I trust Josie. I trust Bob. And – We'll be all right. Hopefully we get Venables or someone else great. And eight's coming sooner than we think, or at least I hope so. We got this, guys. It'll be okay. As a West Virginia fan, I have to say, Lincoln, I hope you and Rich Rod find each other somehow because you deserve each other. Um bailing out on teams that are national contenders that could be con contending for a national championship and giving the last game of her, your tenure away, and that's how I look at it. I could be wrong. A lot of people call me crazy, but I feel like Rich Rod gave away the game against Pitt. I feel like Lincoln gave away the game against Oklahoma State. I, if that is If that is the truth, I hope it haunts you for the rest of your freaking life. I hope you end up at Jacksonville State right along beside Rich Rod. To the OU fan base, I'm a West Virginia fan. I have no love for what happened to you guys. I think it's terrible. But I also think you're going to bounce back bigger and better than you are now, and it's going to show in the future. I'm not being an OU homer. I'm just telling you the way I really see it. I think you're going to really bounce back and you're going to be in a couple of years from now when you're in the SEC and you have a, a world-class defense, you're going to be laughing at Lincoln competing against Oregon for a Pac-12 shit bowl. And that's how I feel about it. But I'm Sam the Man. This is the Mountaineer Effect. This is CP and Lucas, my Oklahoma connection, coming to talk a little bit about what's going on there. We're all in agreement. We think it's going to be just a better fit for Oklahoma through and through. But thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Don't really care which one. Either one is good. 
share the content. Let's get it out there. I think a lot of people would benefit from hearing from two seasoned Oklahoma fans that, you know, aren't your traditional fans. We're all pragmatic and we all don't. The guys that I talk to about football take their blinders off. They're not. They're not homers. And so when you hear us talk about it, you're getting a legitimate look at what fan the 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 legitimate fan really believes. And that's why we keep doing this content is because we believe in being pragmatic. There are a lot of guys out there that do these videos that are homer homers week in, week out, and I can't watch them because it's all bullshit. But that's something you'll never get on the Mountaineer effect. Everybody have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Let's go, Mountaineers. Boomer and Sooner. Boomer Sooner. Yeah, I'll say it. Boomer Sooner. <laughs>